welcome back all you beautiful people welcome back to the channel my name is tommy if you're new here on this channel we talk about mental health recovery from an eating disorder perspective we talk about fitness we talk about nutrition we talk about spirituality we do some vlogs we do some fitness videos along with what i eat in a day videos so i hope you'll find something here that's going to excite you and going to keep you on the channel please give me a thumbs up and a subscribe it'll help the channel massively today what i want to talk about guys is something that we're all facing at the moment as if obviously you do know you're probably in isolation as i do speak about this right away at this very moment in time over in scotland what's actually happening is we've had to practice social distancing during this virus that i don't want to name because we'll obviously be demonetized not that that matters i don't want the money anyway but we don't want the channel taken down so Basically what's happening, obviously, as you know, there's a lot of people getting out panic buying. There's a lot of people not listening to what the government's actually telling them. And I know a lot of conspiracy theorists out there will probably disagree with me on this, but I do believe that there is such a thing as this virus. I don't think it's man-made in a lab. I don't think it's got anything to do with 5G networks. I do feel that it's actually costing people's lives and it's not media scaremongering. Yes, the media is adding to that fear that we're all fearing because we watch too much of the media and I think it's encapsulating us and it's intensifying things. I would say to you guys, if it's doing that to your mental health, please withdraw from it because quite a lot of the time when we've got mental health problems or we're recovering from a mental health problem, if something is stressing us out even more, you want to distance yourself from that as much as possible. And I think at this moment in time, it's good to actually have the internet and the social the social interaction with people so what you actually want to do you want to have a supportive network but you don't want to be listening to a lot of people posting a lot of nonsense on facebook because i will tell you guys that is happening quite a lot a lot of people are post posting absolute nonsense they're not actually listening to scientific advice i would say listen to the scientists listen to the people that are actually in the front line listen to the government listen to the right sources when we're talking about dietary side of things, a lot of people are asking what should they actually be eating during the corona? We're not going to mention that. <laughs> should I should have said that. They're obviously saying, can it help boost your immune system by eating certain foods? Now, I will tell you something that the only best way to actually boost your immune system is by following proper hygiene hygiene methods so obviously washing your hands for 20 seconds or more is what they, they recommend obviously when you go into a supermarket or such like so if you touch anything take some hand sanitizer gel with you because they've even heard that this actually lives on your clothes as well if you touch like a door or any surfaces make sure to obviously do your hands as well constantly it's good to obviously put these methods into place as well guys just to limit anything that may happen obviously a lot of used people probably watching this probably have a good immune system and you probably think oh well i'm not going to get this virus so it's not going to be a problem to me what i will say to you is it's not really about us it's about the people that we can pass it to or who are vulnerable that probably this virus would be end up fatal for them just remember guys this is a time in your life where you have the opportunity to actually probably save somebody's life so do everything you can to help others and limit your obviously impact on the world so when we're talking about dietary side of things what i would obviously recommend to you guys is obviously eat plenty of fruits and vegetables at least five portions a day just to get in all your micronutrients and all your vitamins and minerals and things like that when it comes to calories i would say which is really really important a lot of people are putting out some really really false information and probably dangerous information in my honest opinion and i say that because they're putting out things like this is a great time to be fasting and going on a diet <laughs> that is not only false it's really really dangerous information because when you go on a diet and you obviously go into calorie restriction especially fasting and things like that 
you can obviously tank your immune system and that's the last thing you want to do with this virus is going about you want to keep your immune system topped up you want to keep yourself healthy you want to be in the best shape you can in case you happen to get this virus and you're able to fight it off and get back to regular health so at least staying in a calorie maintenance like i say unfortunately this is we're not talking about everybody that's really, really obese and in hospitals that obviously need to lose weight. These people, these are all monitored. They've get, they're have they in, uh, obviously, a medical situation as well. So that's different. I'm talking about the general public that are out there and can obviously catch this virus and pass it on to others. When it comes to exercise, I know a lot of people are saying, how am I going to exercise because we're told to social distancing? Well, for what I've seen, the government haven't said anything at all, obviously, about going out walks and things like that. It's just not coming into social interaction with other people. So even trying to go out, especially if you've got a dog like myself, I've actually got into Canicross lately, which is basically running with your dog on trails. I find that absolutely therapeutic, going out in nature and things like that. So I would say three to five moderate intensity exercise per week reduces, obviously, your risk of, obviously, injury. I, no, sorry, obviously it reduces your risk of infection and obviously increases recovery time. So I would say do that if you can. Obviously, if you're doing things at home, like if you've got home equipment as well, that's a great way to do that. There's a lot of home workouts you can obviously look up online. A lot of the YouTubers in the fitness community are actually doing it at the moment. You'll find something that you can do. Just because your gyms are closed and your social clubs are closed and everything, which is like happening here in the UK, I dare say that's everywhere. Just because that is closed doesn't mean you can't get in some sort of exercise because exercise is not only just good for your immune system and obviously keeping you healthy. It's really, really important for your mental health as well. And I think that's something we've got to really look at at the moment. Obviously, if you've got an eating disorder. This is a touchy topic because you've got to watch that the exercise isn't becoming habitual and you know, it's becoming like an exercise athletica where you're actually exercising in a way to restrict or in a reward system for food. So you've got to watch that and that's obviously that must be regulated by your mental health recovery team, which for myself at the moment, obviously I'm in a really, really great place. A lot of people's eating disorder appointments have actually moved to online and over the phone as well. So I don't know how you guys are doing. If you would like to let me know in the comments how you're actually working along with your therapist at this moment in time, that'd be really, really helpful. When it comes to vitamins, a lot of people are saying, are vitamins really going to help boost my immune system? No, the evidence out there is really, really scarce on vitamins because they're obviously synthetic. But I say the evidence isn't really conclusive on that. But I would say supplementing with vitamin D would be a really, really good one. Obviously, really good for your bones, your teeth, your immune system, and obviously things like that. So that's really, really good. I would say do that if you can. It's not going to do you any harm. It's not really going to help. Like I say, the best thing is putting into practice good hygiene practices. That's really, really important. The one thing I would say, probiotics, the, the evidence out there is quite positive if not conclusive on probiotics things like natural yogurt and things like that adding them into your diet won't do any harm at all they'll probably do you some good actually so i would say adding them into your diet may be beneficial give it a try it could help a lot so for myself greek yogurt i've been adding that in quite a bit some bit frozen berries into it with some protein powder so you're getting kind of everything in that i used to do that quite a lot after my Pre, like a post-workout meal but now I'm using it obviously a little bit more as well so I find that's a good snack something easy doesn't fill you up it's got a lot of good vitamins and nutrients in it vitamin C and E like I say don't overdose on that that's really really important like I say the evidence is pretty pretty weak in that and it obviously comes with a lot of side effects as well like I say vitamin toxicity and things like that so just be very very careful in that wouldn't do you any harm the evidence is not great Add it in if you want to, but I wouldn't say it's really, really beneficial. Just getting in your a good dietary requirement that obviously it meets your nutritional sufficiency. That's what I would say is really, really important. But like I say combating hunger, up your protein. I think that's really, really important. Like I say it's obviously the most saturated macronutrient that there actually is. Obviously, boost it with some boost your fiber with plenty of fruits and vegetables. Do that if you can. Like I say. 
they're talking about the symptoms of this, let's see. So the symptoms of this are obviously really high temperature and a continuous new cough that's that's obviously happened recently. So if you obviously get this, they're actually telling you not to phone 111, which is in the UK for the NHS service because they're constrained as it is. So stay at home for seven days. And obviously, if things have improved, then obviously you can resume certain things. But if you've actually got a family member that's got it that you live with, they're actually telling you to stay home for 14 days. And that's from the time that the person actually started having the symptoms as well, guys. So do that. Like I say, try and help out in your community where you can. Putting a note through somebody's door, asking them for help, especially the old old age pensioners at this time. They're really struggling. Asking them if you can get, get their medications for them, if you can go any shopping and things like that. We've all got to stick in this together, guys. It's really, really important. I say this is a time to help each other. Like I say, when it comes to mental health, like I, I said earlier, if you can, obviously, switch off notifications and tune in to, obviously, official information. But, like I said earlier, if the official information is becoming a little overwhelming, try and switch away from it for a little while. Because this is not going anywhere anytime soon. And the thing that you want, you least want to do is become embroiled in it all. And it obviously intensifies, like I say. We're talking about this being in lockdown for probably 12 weeks. But like I say, a lot of selfish people are doing the wrong thing. But obviously going into the promenades and the beaches and things because it's really good weather here in the UK at the moment. Which is a bit of a, a stark thing from the usual weather that we get at this time of year. And we're all in that self, like social distancing at this point. So crazy, but that's the way it is. Obviously, shopping mindfully and local is really, really important. Like I say, people are mass buying things like toilet rolls, pasta, things that are not needed. But like I say, especially toilet roll, which is actually made here in the UK. It's absolutely insane, like I say, and it leaves the vulnerable that actually need it. It leaves them short. So they've actually started doing things here in the UK like having special opening hours for the elderly, 9 to 10 a.m. in the morning to actually let them get the, the produce that they actually need in things because it's absolutely got out of hand. Like I say, the government said that there's enough food for all of us as long as we shop sensibly. And a lot of people aren't doing that, guys. And a lot of people don't have the money to do that, especially somebody like myself who has to shop week by week to get what I need. We've not got the money to mass buy, and it's just absolutely crazy, guys, because you're putting other people at danger. And obviously, people that are already vulnerable to health issues and things, if they can't meet their nutritional needs because they can't get the food that they need, it's leaving them even more vulnerable. So be sensible, guys. Be caring to others and think about everybody. We're all in this together at this point. So be aware of who you can help is another one. I feel that's really, really important to get out. Like I say, the old age pensioners, the vulnerable all around you. Like I say, the internet at this moment in time is a great thing to do. Asking people just do things like Zoom calls if you can, Skype to keep up with friends and things, just asking them how they are, if you can help them in any way. That's really, really important and it goes a long, long way. It's like they say, some of the powerful, most powerful things is actually just asking somebody if they're okay. And especially at this time, we all need to be in this together. The one thing I would say is as well, this this time that we've got in our hands, which we don't know how long this is going to last. It could last weeks, it could last months. So using this time to obviously find a new hobby, that's one thing you can really, really do. Like I say, getting into art and things like that, that can be really, really beneficial for your mental health. And you might find that it's a hobby that you really, really love doing. Use that, get into things like yoga, meditation, even do things like learn to play an instrument, the ukulele, the guitar or something. Obviously, the ukulele would be a good one as well. It's a, it's a gateway to go into the guitar. Do something that you really enjoy. Use this time to find a new hobby. There's a lot of different things online that offer free courses at the moment. One of them is a British Sign Language. They're actually offering a course that you just pay as much as you can afford, £5 or whatever. That can help out in your community as well volunteering in the community this time quite a lot of the community trusts are actually offering for people to help out during 
COVID-19. So helping out delivering food parcels, helping out at the food banks and things like that, which the food banks at this time are actually strained to the max because they're concerned about obviously shutting down and people not being able to obviously give food to those that actually need it. That's a good thing to help out as well, guys. You'll find something in your community. Just look around. I feel that's important. But obviously, protect yourself as well, which I'm sure if you were volunteering for anybody, they would have these kind of things in place. But just be really, really sensible and keep yourself safe as well, guys. Obviously, if you are struggling, I say ask for professional help at this time. That's really, really important. If you've obviously not got a social network, quite a lot of the mental health charities have got online support networks as well. Obviously, be, be Eating the UK, the Eating Disorder Charity, you've got Mind, you've got See Me Scotland. There's all ways you can reach out to them. Whatever charities are in the country that you live, just look them up. They've got support there for you guys. You're not alone. Just remember that. Like I say, at these times for isolation, mental health, Pro issues can actually thrive on this because it's like a secrecy thing. Like I say, you find a lot of people, what I've actually heard recently, especially with eating disorders, are that they're really, really concerned because some of them are obviously suffer with binge eating disorder and there's a lot of food in their house and they're really, really concerned about that. Some people that are actually get restrictive eating disorders are really, really concerned that they're not going to have the food and things like that, and they feel that they're, they're going to be at an impact on everybody else, and it's making them pull in, inwards to their eating disorder and obviously restrict again, guys. I want to tell you, you've got to be healthy, body and mind at this time. Please do everything you can. Like I say, reach out to people if you're struggling. People are here for you. Don't let this time be where you slip back into the eating disorder. I know that's really, really easy for me to say, but you've got to be aware at this time, and this is a time to really knuckle down and go on with something. Find a distraction, find a new hobby that's going to keep you going through these times. That's really, really important. If you obviously have to self-isolate, let's say, I would, I would say create a realistic and helpful daily routine and structure to your daily day as well, which is really, really important. So structure out something, something that's going to keep you on the path each single day from the morning you wake up till you go to bed at night, making sure you get enough sleep and you wake up at regular times. That can help massively, guys. This is all going to boost your immune system as well, be getting enough sleep, getting something like seven to eight hours sleep, eight hours the maximum, I would say, or sorry, minimum would be the, the main thing that you want to look at. If you can get more, all the better. But this will obviously help your immune system as well. Like I say, fresh air, if you can get that, that's really, really important. Obviously, if you stay in a flat, even opening a window and things like that, that can help massively. It helps your mental health and things. Getting out a walk, if you can, going with your, a walk with your dog is absolutely amazing getting out into nature obviously it's kind of distancing yourself from people if because there's probably going to be a lot of people out here walking I, i've seen that myself where i live let's say if you've got an outdoor extension as well just do that open it get some fresh air meditate that will help you massively let's say keeping in touch with others like i just touched upon earlier that's one thing that you, it's really really important at this time Keeping a journal as well, you might find that really, really helps you. It'll obviously help you look back on things and it'll help you stay on track. Obviously, set tasks and set goals. Do something that's going to really help you this time, guys. Set tasks, set goals, smash it. We're all in this together, guys. Please reach out to me if you need any, any help at all. I'm here for you always. Like I say, I'm doing this stream today without Ryan and this will be on my channel as well because this will help a lot of the followers on my channel. Remember as always guys, binge on life, purge negativity and starve guilty feelings and peace and love to all your family this time. Stay safe and I'll speak to you all soon.